view on uh, on which are the topics uh, that run on cognitive radio. So once we have a bit of this, you know, reference, basic ground, let's go into why we need cognitive radio today. Because you could say, ah, okay, it's nice, it's funny, it's, you know, you could simply take it as an academic exercise, but why do we need cognitive radio or something that goes into the direction of cognitive radio? That's because today, still today, we have what we call the full convergence. We have a number of devices, more and more devices, I would say. Um, which are these ones. We have in your mobile phones or in your, our tablets. We have MP3 players or multimedia players. We have photo cameras and we want cameras which are more and more, you know, high quality because why bother in bringing a big camera when we have the mobile phone? And we have gaming systems and we have, you know, the laptop uh, in the office uh, applications. And as you can see here, there is a new vision of the Ubuntu guys that would like to make Ubuntu on mobile phones for having your office everywhere. And then we have the cloud. The cloud is basically everything. Everything you can imagine, any application, doesn't run on your device, it runs in the cloud. And why this is a problem? This is a problem because the cloud no matter what you do in the cloud, it requires a massive amount of data transmission that needs to be ensured with proper QoS to and from your mobile device. Today, we are struggling with the current technologies, with the normal, what we call the normal technology, and we need to go to something else. The current standards are moving in these directions, and I will show you later on why? But this is basically the, the reason why we need cognitive radio. The Another reason, once we have the applications that are pushing us to have more and more complex and sophisticated and intelligent devices, we have another little problem. And the problem is that if you look at your left side here, this is the radio allocation table for US. That's a very, very famous picture in the current radio world. As you can see, how much free space do you see in this picture? Anyone has a very, very precise, you know, pinpointing eye that could tell me exactly where? <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. It's almost impossible. Everyone is trying to do it, the same exercise since 10 years, and no one managed so far. They need to reshuffle, refarm, and move systems here and there, because this one, are the licenses that have been issued by FCC, which is the Federal Communication Commission of the US, for using the spectrum. You want to use it, we allocate for a certain type of system, that's the license occupied. Plus, this one, 2012 to 2016, this is the Cisco traffic increase forecast. Now you see, as you can see, this is 2012, this is 2016. In four years, you, you have how many times? Eight, ten. In 2020, this traffic increase is supposed, compared to today, to increase the amount of traffic of a thousand times. You sum this problem with this traffic, boom. What do you have? You have a total disruption of the telecommunication systems. You cannot have broadband communication, basically. 
Why? Because the new systems require higher bandwidth, require higher data rates. How do we deal with it? That's a big problem. That's called the spectrum crunch in the, in the business and telecommunication uh, terminology. <coughs> so, let's see if this guy works. <coughs> Now, let's see what the Federal Communication Commission, the same guy that was issuing licenses, foresee in terms of broadband data. It foresees that here, you know, this is the traffic data growth from 2009 to 2014. And as you can see, it's 1,250% of the traffic in only five years. And this is the amount of spectrum that it would be, you know, surplus. Once we serve the, all the traffic, how much spectrum we have left? 2012, we still have 87 megahertz. Nothing. Next year, we will miss 90 megahertz for serving this amount of traffic. 2014, which is two years ahead, we are missing 275 megahertz of spectrum. How do we deal with it? Because it's, this is a huge problem. Because we, but we'll still be customers willing to pay for the services, especially now that every one of us wants to be connected. I suppose that, let's say, let's raise your hand. How many of you, also you guys in India, are paying for a mobile phone subscription with data in. Okay, not, not impressive, I would expect it more, but very in India, how many? Do you have mobile phones with data? Yes, yeah, okay, it's more or less the same amount. So if you guys are willing to pay, plus just imagine the guys with the iPhone, that's a big move. I mean, it's not that all the spectrum is really occupied. We have a big bunch, but really, really big. We are talking about 7 gigahertz of spectrum available at 60 gigahertz of carrier frequency. There's only one problem. That 60 gigahertz is not exactly the best spectrum for coverage. Because at that frequency, how much do you expect to cover? Any radio frequency guy here who can tell me? A couple of meters. Uh, let's say that we can do a bit more, but five meters, yeah. mm, five. And how much would you like, let, let, let's go really, really housey. Which is the coverage that you would like to have in your flat with your Wi-Fi, for example? 20 meter radius. Yeah. 20 meter radius, okay. Do we deal with 60 gigahertz, 20 meter? So, I mean, someone is trying to do it, but the su commercial success, even if you do it, you know, even if it's feasible, I don't know, it's practical from a commercial point. So, here you have a couple of uh, references. Uh, the same term crunch and spectrum crunch has a very nice definition on the Federal Communication Commission website, in their own Wikipedia. So, let's say, now we know that we have a problem. But, there is a but. There were some measurement results.